Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on some spatial analysis for sustainable urban design. We have essentially created a point and click approach to um, locating food and transportation within an urban area and assessing how accessible it is to various households or buildings. What this map is showing is we've got some data coming from OpenStreetMap. We've got the base layer here. And we've got bus stops and food sources. These food sources are essentially uh, convenience stores and I think it's called supermarkets in the um, OSM um, data model. Then what we wanted to ask is, you know, how many of these households can access transportation within walking distance, for example? Uh, that's, a, that's a fuzzy definition. We're not exactly sure what walking uh, distance means. Walkability is a hugely uh, unexplored area for the, our project. And, but essentially, we're kind of taking a simple approach um, by making circular buffers around the geometries. So we thought maybe for you know, convenient access to a bus stop would be within a, you know, 250 meters or so. Because um, there's a lot of bus stops in, in Tampere, so we kind of just uh, made that one a little bit smaller. But for um, convenient access to foods, uh, s sources, maybe that's the one kilometer buffer, excuse me. Uh, here's the one kilometer buffer around the food sources, meaning you could walk there or bike there relatively conveniently. You know, this is not taking into account terrain or the, the topology of the street network, anything like that. It's just simply buffering. And for each of these, to um, kind of geometries, um, which by the way, we uh, originally produced a bunch of circles, overlapping circles, and we dissolved the outside. Uh, we dissolved those circles by taking a, a, a union of all of them, and so you get one or a few geometries where there's no you know, overlap, you'll get indep independent geometries. And so what we can now do is take a look at building footprints and we can do a composite analysis. We can say, show us um, the buildings that are both within 250 meters of a bus stop and one kilometer of a food source. Uh, and since we manually did this by a point and click process. And this wasn't done during the live stream today. This was done in, in advance um, over the last couple of days. But what we wanted to do is reproduce that. So you can see here that basically the houses in orange uh, they don't meet both of those criteria, even though these ha these houses here are within a reasonable distance of a food source. They not are, they're not always conveniently located uh, transport-wise. And again, these are just um, hypothetical. Uh, we can tweak the parameters. We can get more elaborate with the analysis and definitions. But there's always going to be trade-offs. Nothing's going to be perfect, and we just want to get something um, a proof of concept because we're building a prototype. So today's work was to take this type of point and click analysis, um, drop down a little bit of the filtered data, because I actually downloaded data for all of Finland, and there was a lot of it. So I just had to kind of take a small sample. Uh, so I dropped that down into a directory, and we specifically looked at the points of interest, the food sources in GeoJSON format. Uh, so I'll just quickly spin through this notebook for um, an overview of what we've achieved so far. Essentially, what we do here is just define a string pointing to the file name, and we use GeoPandas to import that. It kind of imports it as a big table, and it's built on pandas, and it's got some other nice um, components that make working with geographic data a lot easier. So you can see this is essentially the way uh, OSM structures its data. Uh, each item has an, an identifier from the OSM, as well as an identifier, I think, left over from QGIS part, and then an identifier from um, Geopandas, but in any case, uh, what we were interested in is the feature class. These are all convenience stores and supermarkets, and they have names which we're not really using yet, but we could put those on the map as a label. Well, I'll show you the map in a minute. And they have a geometry associated with them. Notice that this coordinate is uh, probably not one that we're familiar with. We're, we're familiar with, familiar with uh, looking at latitude and longitude coordinates. This is in a projected um, coordinate system called Web Mercator. And it's the de facto way um, coordinate system for, for many web mapping projects, or several, I think there's two main branches of web mapping projects that 
uh, one that one using lat long and the other branch using this pseudo mercator I think uh, Google Maps is in that um, pseudo mercator category and kind of led the way and uh, our mapping library folium uh, is using lat long so there's some juggling going on in this it's a little bit annoying uh, but that's part of the way that's uh, like the way of the gun when you're dealing with geographic data. What we're trying to do is make it so urban planners don't have to think about that or worry about any of that when we're doing the work underneath uh, a layer of abstraction for them. So buffers are the, you know, kind of like the circles around uh, the geometries here. So you can extend, and uh, it doesn't have to be a point, you know, if you do a buffer around a point, it's going to make a circle, but it can be buffers around lines, like you could make a buffer around this um, around roads to say what's kind of an easement we should have here for uh, like a setback for like building uh, sidewalks for example if we want to make this neighborhood more walkable all these kind of th questions are urban uh, designers going to ask on a regular basis and we don't want them to fiddle uh, at this level it's just kind of tedious uh, so we just created a thousand meter buffer from what I can understand uh, the units f uh, these are m I believe m meters and um, they give us a uniform uh, unit. Uh, as an aside, um, latitude and longitude degrees, uh, the distance of a degree varies. The further north you get, they kind of shorten as things start to wrap around the pole. So you don't have a uniform measurement. And that's what these kind of projected uh, coordinate reference systems do, is they kind of like give you a uniform grid and put things in more natural terms, uh, specifically meters and kilometers and things like that. Uh, you can also get it into uh, miles, um, but we're sticking with the uh, metric system here. All right, so then creating those buffers creates a bunch of little circles, and it gets really messy. And so we dissolve those, and to do that, we just take a union of all these overlapping ones and uh, join it. So I don't know if I have an example here. One kilometer buffer. Double check the symbology here. If I take the fill away, it might show us all those little squiggly circles. No. No, same deal. Okay, basically, um, I don't have the counter example to show you, but it's this dissolve is basically what creates the nice smooth contour around the, the groups. Uh, then we have to juggle accordance a little bit, and these are very kind of esoteric, but these are um, European Petroleum Survey Group coordinate. Uh, identifier classification numbers uh, so we just have to know what uh, classification we're coming from and where we need to go and they just each of these has a number so in QGIS uh, we're dealing with Web Mercator which is the e European Petroleum Survey Group 3857 and if we want to go to uh, World Geodetic Survey 84 latitude longitude coordinates uh, it's EPSG 4326 all this stuff is just pff, uh, kind of mind-bending, but they're little details you have to be aware of because they can uh, throw wrenches into your uh, work pretty easily. So we didn't, um, actually I didn't do anything with this union here, but we're going to um, project it using PyProj uh, from this 3857 to 4326, which is that latitude and longitude, so that we can create a map. I know this folium um, library wants to use things in Latlon. So the first thing we do is just uh, we're working with data around the city of Tampere, where I live, and we create a map and we center it on Tampere. And then we just add a couple of geojson layers. So before I get too far ahead, uh, let me just kind of go through these. These are interesting. Um, but basically, first we converted the coordinate reference system to this latitude longitude because we're using pseudo Mercator. Then we can uh, use, um, these are geodata frames, and it's got a convenience function to drop it to GeoJSON. So basically a couple lines of code does some pretty powerful things, uh, converting you know, potentially thousands of coordinates um, with a relatively complex mathematical functions, and then converting a data format uh, into JSON, uh, a geographic uh, um, subset or of JSON, I suppose. That subset's the right word there. Uh, and then Essentially, we, let me just double check this, this is buffered. This buffered one I had stopped working with because we wanted the buffered union. The buffered uh, one was the messy, actually I can just maybe.
show you that real quick. Uh, I haven't uh, imported any of these things. So let me just wrap up real quick. <laughs> but Folium is our mapping library. Once we've got a, a Folium map instance, we can add a couple layers to that map instance. Um, it mainly wants things in GeoJSON. Uh, there's a couple of other options for like web mapping services we might explore later. Essentially, you just pass in each of the uh, the GeoJSON data sources and give it a nice human-friendly name that's used in this um, layer selector here. And you can add that by the layer control. It's pretty easy API once you read through the docs. Uh, the documentation is pretty limited on Folium, but the examples were useful enough and some stack overflowing got me along. Way and so here we are. We have uh, our food sources as point and our food buffers uh, as multi polygon layer. Very cool. So we're part of the way there. Um, whoopsie daisy. The next steps are going to be this um, kind of intersection or geo within um, analysis where we add actually attributes to the data and to kind of um, more or less classify the ones that are. Uh, I guess accessible. We still don't have quite a term for the for the composite analysis, but we just have to have some kind of Boolean field. So we have three Boolean fields: one for the ones that are within um, walking distance of a grocery store, another Boolean field for ones that are conveniently located uh, by a transport um, node or bus stop, and then we combine those the ones that ha are both conveniently located. Via by a food source and transport is a third uh, third one, and the whole reason for doing all of that is so that we can display it in a map and people can kind of see um, what places around town might need a, a sort of a design intervention. There could be whole neighborhoods where people just have to their own you know they have to rely on a car. They might not even have sidewalks. If I I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, so yeah, that's the goal here is to get up to these higher levels of awareness and analytical capabilities. We're taking it one step at a time. All of our source code is on GitHub, on github.com slash sustainable urban design. You can see this pull request, uh, where are we at? Uh, proximity, proximity analysis notebook, PR113, all the changes involved. You can uh, go back in time a little bit and zero in on exactly this stuff. If you'd like to get involved in the, this project, we're really um, welcoming uh, to contributors uh, from a, a, any skill set. Uh, we need you know designers, researchers, people who are interested in code, uh, coming up with ideas, maybe doing community outreach, uh, helping improve the documentation. Uh, we are following the all contributors um, method to community engagement. Likewise, if you want to get on uh, involved in other open source projects, stop by codebuddies.org. There's a lot of really cool groups formed on there and continue to form, uh, covering almost any type of technology or pursuit, you know, data science, job interviews, you know, we've got Python, Django, Java, you name it. There's a lot of groups there. The codebuddies.org platform is also open source at github.com slash codebuddies. It's currently being rewritten with a Django backend and a React front end. So if you'd like to get involved with a early uh, Greenfield project, check out the Code Buddies GitHub or this Sustainable Urban Design app. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you're doing well out there and have a great day.